my name is Elise Cabret. I'm a songwriting coach here at Daughter, helping you write and record the songs of tomorrow. So this little song I just played, you might have recognised. It's called Hedwig's Theme and it's from Harry Potter. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I'm a massive Harry Potter nerd. Um, so I just love playing this piece on my baritone ukulele. So I know I haven't done a video for a little while, guys, um, but I've just been busy with all sorts of things. But I have been thinking for a while that I wanted to start doing maybe a little video series on um, how to play this amazing instrument, um, which I think is super underrated. And um, I don't know, I was always like, I was a metal kid, so ukuleles were just never cool, right? I'm still not even sure if they're cool, but I bought this instrument um, when I went traveling because I couldn't, you know, carrying a guitar around was just way too hard. I was backpacking. Um, so I wanted something a bit more portable, a bit smaller, and I ended up with this guy. Um, which is technically a ukulele, but it is uh, quite a bit bigger than a, a standard uke and also tuned the same as a guitar, which really appealed to me because I didn't have to relearn a bunch of chords. Um, this thing is basically just the bottom four strings of a guitar or the top four strings, depending on how you look at it. Um, so yeah, it is like since then I've kind of fallen in love with this thing. I, everything is so easy to play on it. Um, and I've kind of developed this hobby of um, trying to figure out how to play just every song ever on this tiny little instrument. And so far it hasn't let me down, um, like to the point that I am currently trying to figure out how to play Bohemian Rhapsody, like the actual piano part on this little four stringed instrument. I'm determined it is possible. Anyway, so I thought um, I could do a little video series. Uh, I've noticed there's not a lot of finger picking tutorials on YouTube for baritone ukuleles. So I thought maybe I could uh, put some of my arrangements out there and I don't know, you guys can learn a little bit more about this awesome instrument and maybe it'll be fun for you to learn as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna move back a little bit. So hopefully you can see both of my hands. Um, for this tutorial, I thought a really good fun one to start with was of course Hedwig's theme um, from Harry Potter, which you just heard in the introduction to this video. Okay, so step one is, um, well, step one is <laughs> one of the best ways I've found to get around um, when I'm trying to arrange these songs for this instrument um, is sometimes you have to change the tuning. Now, I know I just told you that this is tuned uh, D, G, B, E, like the bottom of a guitar. Um, but for this particular piece and for other songs that are written in E minor, it's really handy to have that low E string available. So I, all I did was just take the, the D and tune it up to an E. And now I have a low E string, which basically means this is now the top string of a guitar and the bottom three strings of a guitar, which is, you know, we can get away with a lot from that. All right, so to start with, we're just playing open strings. So pluck the uh, open B and then the two open E strings. So nice and easy, right? So B, E, B. And now we want to take our fretting hand and our um, middle finger on fret three on the high E string. So most of the melody is played on this high E string um, and there's lots of open notes in there just to fill out the rhythm part. So you'll you'll kind of get what I mean by that as we move along. Um, so yeah, starting with fret three and then fret two on this high E string. So we go and then open again. So we're hitting that bottom string twice in this part. Pretty easy so far, right? And it sounds beautiful. Sounds like Harry Potter. Okay. Um, and now we want to take our uh, ring finger and hit the high E on fret seven. And then I think it goes, uh, sorry. It's really hard to play things out of context. Like you, it's funny how much muscle memory plays when you're playing a song, you're like, yeah, I can play this. And then the minute you stop, you're like, ah, how does it go? Um, so forgive me if I do that a little bit. Anyway, so fret seven and then fret uh, five, fret two, so, and we're 
hitting, remembering to hit that low E as well. Right? Once again. Beautiful. So that's the first phrase. Now things get a little bit trickier, but I believe in you, it's not too hard. We've only got four strings to worry about, so it's already way easier than guitar. <laughs> Love guitar, but shh, don't tell it I said that. Anyway, here we go. Now we want to go open again. So open, three, two, next. This is one of the trickiest parts of the whole thing, but it's actually not that hard once you get your head around it. So we want to take fret, uh, our index finger, fret one on the low E string, and our pinky uh, uh, on fret four on the B string, that's this guy. So we're going to hit those together. So once again, it's very dissonant. And I love this, these dissonant chords are what gives this piece its mysterious uh, tone, which is just wonderful. So, um, but what we want to do next is we want to hit this uh, G open. So you want to make sure you're not with your, your index finger, you're not accidentally touching the G string um, and muting it. So that would sound like, so I want to make sure I've got my index finger nice and arched so it's not touching that string. So we can go, right, all those notes are ringing clearly, so with me still so far? Right, there's one more tricky bit and then it's going to get easy again. So we're going to use our index finger once again to bar fret one on the high E string. So, right, so we go. And it's kind of tricky because you want to you want that finger really arched so you can get that um, G note, but then the next note we can just push our finger down to get that high E. I mean, well, it's not an E, it's a F now, but high E string. You know what I mean? Fret one. So that's all it sounds like. And then it's super easy because the next part is uh, open strings. So we go. Easy again, right? So just picking that all open. So if you can get over the stress of this chord, <laughs> you're home free by the end of it. Ah, open strings. <laughs> okay, next phrase. Um, actually, should we just go over what we've learned so far? So from the top. Oh, nope, that's wrong. Try again, from the top. Beautiful. Okay, so the next phrase starts in the same way. So we're gonna do that um, once again, which you've already got, but instead we're gonna go up. So we're gonna go Fret seven, and then we're gonna play some chords. So these chords are, you're just playing the bottom three strings. So you're playing uh, 12 on the G. Uh, so it's 12, 10, no, sorry, 12, 11, 10. Nice and easy, 12, 11, 10. And I like to give it a good sweep, which sounds beautiful on nylon strings. You can really articulate the chord. Right? Like a harp. It's beautiful. And then on that higher string, we're going to go down chromatically. And once again, move down one more time and same shape. So we're going. So this is, we're landing on uh, 10, 9, 8. And we just hit that uh, B string again. So uh, my sister's ringing me. <laughs> what happens when you record on your iPhone. Sorry, sorry Mills. Okay, <laughs> we're good. All right. And then we're gonna take our index and, sorry, our ring. 
That took me way too long to remember. Ring finger and middle finger. And we're gonna swip, swap, brain. It's all falling apart. We're gonna swap our middle finger and our ring finger around to play this chord. Very nice. So that is uh, nine, 10, eight. So we're going. Now swapping those fingers around is something that I personally find a little bit challenging. So it took me a lot of practice to get that smooth and I don't get it smoothly every time. So forgive yourself if it is a little bit tricky, but you'll get there. So. And now we're gonna descend again on that high E string. So it's all chromatic. Uh -huh. So we're going seven, six, so we're going. That whole run is really chromatic along that e, high E string. Um, and then what happens? Oh yeah, we got another um, dissonant chord here. So this one is easy to play, but a bit of a jump for your hand. So you're wanting to play um, fret two on the low E and fret three on the G. So, so um, right? Sounds very disjointed, but it sounds beautiful in context. So, um, and to finish it off, we're just hitting fret three on the high E string and then open. Right? Beautiful. So if you're still with me this far, you've just learned the whole first part of this amazing theme. Next, we've got a, a new section. So if you, even if you just get that bit down, like pat yourself on the back, it's super fun to play. But we're not finished yet because the next bit is even more fun. So it goes like this. Oh, if I can play it right. <laughs> Beautiful. So to play that, it's open strings once again, we're playing the melody on the high E string. So we're going from fret three to fret seven. I like to do a little bit of a slide the first time I play it and then a bit more staccato -y on the second time. So you'll hear that. Let me give that another go. So you'll hear that if I play it nice and slowly. Hear that? You don't have to do that. It's just a nice little bit of added expression. So high E again, um, and then we're going to move up to the eight and also the, the bottom E. So nice. And we're playing just this little filler rhythm in the, um, the open D, right, uh, uh, G and B strings. So. Um, all right, so once from, from here, we're going back to seven. So, and now we're gonna play a bar chord. But don't get scared, it's a nice and easy one. So we're gonna go fret three on uh, G and B. Why can I not remember those today? Um, right, and on the high E string, we're going fret six, so it's. Nice and dissonant again. Bring Very mysterious magic going on. Lovely. Very Harry Potter. So once again. Next, once we're here, we're gonna use our little pinky finger to fret um, fret seven on the B string to get this note. And then we're gonna move our uh, index finger to fret three and pluck the open string at the same time. So that sounds really complicated, but watch me do it. So we're going from. So from this bar chord, bring, dung, fret seven on B string, and then E and the G note, fret three. Lovely. You still with me? 
it is a little bit tricky and this took me a lot of practice to learn so please don't be discouraged if you're thinking what is going on this piece was not composed for guitar let alone baritone ukulele so give yourself some credit um or maybe you're smashing it and way better at this than i am <laughs> just completely possible all right so where are we Open B string again, and then seven six. So, um, right. One more time, and then we're going to play that dissonant chord that we saw last time. Um, the two and the three. Right. Another. It's a big hand movement again, so it might take a bit of practice to get that smooth. So. Now, the next note is an open, open B string, which is really important. But what I want you to make sure you don't do is play all of them together. Don't go, you want to go the first two strings, then the B. Right? Important notes in the melody. And then open again. I feel like this song, anytime it gets real hard, it suddenly becomes really easy again. So we get a little breather. It's like, oh. All right, so once, one more time. Almost home. So the next phrase starts the same again. Um, how does it start? All right, right. We're back here. But instead, we're going to go back up to those chords that we already learned. So you can already play this part. Right? 12, 11, 10. Swap the index and middle finger around. So once again. And then descending on that high E string. And my eye has a hair in it. And then back to that dissonant two and three. And to finish it off, we just hit the high E string with our middle finger, uh, sorry, ring finger, fret three, and then open strings. Right, so. I like to finish it with a plucking that bottom E. Just gives it a nice bassy resolution there. As bassy as this instrument can be. Um, and that's it. That's the whole song. So it's some pretty simple parts, some little tricky parts, but nothing that you won't be able to figure out with a bit of practice. Um, so give yourself some time if you want to learn something really cool on a baritone ukulele. I, f I think that Harry Potter is just about the big biggest, um, like most impressive campfire song you could bust out on this thing because most people are expecting you to be like but if you're like suddenly you're like what is happening here um anyway that was really fun if you would like to hear more of my baritone ukulele arrangements of songs as i figure them out i can do more videos like this one um, I've noticed there's not a lot of like finger picking tutorials for baritone nuke on YouTube. So maybe that's a space that I can fill and actually offer you guys something useful rather than just adding to the noise of YouTube. Um, but yeah, if that's something you think you'd like to see more of, then I can absolutely post more videos like this one. Um, yeah, I might try and link the, um, see if I can put a link to the tab for this as well that I've written out. Um, in the description. If I don't figure that out, I apologize, um, but I'll give it a shot. <laughs> All right, so thank you so much for watching. Um, as always, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out, um, boosts those YouTube algorithms so more people see my videos and it helps me grow my channel. So if you've enjoyed this content, um, I'd really appreciate it if you can click those buttons. Thanks so much. My name's Elise Cabre. I'm from Daughter, and I will see you next time. <laughs>